Explore the Planet Scale dashboard by creating your very first database. Hey everyone, my name is Brian Morrison. I'm on the developer education team here at PlanetScale. In this video, we're going to cover the very basics of the PlanetScale dashboard by creating your very first database. This is the first video in a series I'll be creating to walk you through the core concepts of PlanetScale and what you'll need to know building on top of the platform. Let's take a look. So I'm going to assume you already have created a Planet Scale account. If you haven't, check the links in the description below if you're watching this on YouTube. I'll leave something there to walk you through that process as well. Once you've created an account and verified your email address, this is the first screen that you're going to see. Um, so to start off by creating a database, there's two ways you can do this. If you're if you're at the screen, there's a link here that says uh, create, which will get you the create database modal. But also if you step through this process, which is essentially going to walk you through a lot of the things that I'm going to in this video. Uh, the last step of the process also has a button here to create your first database or to import an existing database. Uh, we're going to focus specifically on creating databases in this uh, series of guides. So I'm going to click create your first database and you'll be presented with a modal here. Um, now, the first thing we actually have to do is give our database a name. Um, we're going to work off of a, a common concept that I build things with on Planet Scale um, that is around kind of a travel agency or a, a hotel booking application. So we're going to name the database travel underscore DB. OK, and then you'll also notice there's a drop. There's a drop down here for selecting a different region. Now you can scroll through these different regions and by selecting something besides the, the default of Northern Virginia, um, you can place your database in different geographical locations around the world. If you're building something for a production system, the closer your database is to the user, the faster the response times are going to be. We're going to stick with US East one or Northern Virginia just for the sake of this tutorial. And I'm going to go ahead and click create database. So as you can see, we're in the process of initializing the database. It only takes a few minutes to get the database up and ready to start working with. So I'm going to pause the video here and come back when it's done. OK, so now we can see our database is initialized and pretty much ready for us to start working with. Um, before we start creating the database, let's kind of just look at the dashboard in general, and I'll explain what some of these different tabs and buttons mean. Uh, so we're going to start with the overview tab. That's where we're at right now. This just kind of gives you some basic information about your database, uh, number of tables, number of branches. Um, there's next in line the deploy requests, which is how you would create or how you would manage deploy requests for your database. More on that in the next video. Um, then there's also branches. We'll touch on branches a little bit on this one, but we're also going to go a little deeper in the next video. But essentially, um, a branch is like a copy of your database um, is the best way to think about it for now. Uh, the insights tab, if once you start actually running queries against your database, will give you some uh, metrics that you can use to track problematic queries and kind of debug things. And then settings is where you get access to some of the, the global settings that manage that database. Uh, there's also these two buttons over here we'll touch on the series connect, which is, gives you the connection strings to access your database through uh, your code or through some kind of third party uh, client. And then new branches where is an easy way for you to create a new branch. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a table to our database. Um, now we have to click on branches and then navigate into the main branch here. Uh, now you'll notice there's a new series of tabs. The, the navigation is updated. So we have the organization name followed by the database name we're in and then the branch name. So once we select the branch, we're dropped into this overview tab. Um, this is going to give us some quick information about the database, but let's step through some of these uh, these tabs here as well. So there's the console, which if I click on this, because this is where we're going to go next, actually gives you a um, kind of an in-browser command line session to your database. So you can actually run queries um, against the database just like you would using MySQL in your local uh, development box. Uh, schema gives you a quick um, a quick view of the different tables that are inside the database, specifically the commands to create those tables. Uh, backups, as you would expect, will show you the backups that are available for the database, and the insights shows you those same metrics uh, for the for the branch specifically instead of the the database in general. So let's head back to console, and we're going to uh, create our first table. So I'm going to type in create table, and the name of the table is going to be hotels. Uh, we're going to create something very simple for the time being, just to kind of explain some of these concepts. Uh, let's see. The next uh, thing we're going to add is we're going to add an ID field. So the ID is going to be a, an integer. It's going to be the primary key. And it's going to auto increment. And then we need to put a comma after that. And then our next, um, our next field or column here is going to be name. That's going to be a string or varchar field. We're going to give that a total of 50 characters that's an, available for it. And then we'll put not null because we never want a hotel that doesn't have a name. The next thing we're going to add is an address. Uh, typically, you'd want to split these out into different fields. But for the sake of the example, we'll also make this a var car. We'll give this one 100 just to give it a little bit extra space in here. And we also want this to be not null because a hotel shouldn't exist without a uh, without an address. 
And then the last field we're going to add for the time being is what stars, which is kind of like a rating. If you imagine if you're on like a um, like a travel website, they show ratings for hotels. Uh, we're going to give this a data type of float and we're going to give it a precision of two. So we should be able to add um, a whole number followed by two decimal points after that. And then we're also going to flag this unsigned because we shouldn't have negative numbers for our stars. So I'm going to go ahead and close off the parens, add a semicolon, hit enter. And we could see the command completed in 120 milliseconds. Now, if I go to the schema tab, you could see we have this hotels table along with the uh, create table statement that we just executed. So we can see this table now exists in the database. After watching this video, you should have a good understanding on how to navigate the PlanetScale dashboard, create databases, and work with those databases using the web console. In the next video, we're going to take a deeper dive into branching and deploy requests and see how those features can enhance your developer workflow. I'll see you then.